So, so before we go any further, we are going to basically send our regards to Lenwood, who's not going to be with us today. Oh, my dog, goodness. Sadie has, has died today. Just awful. Mm. And Just awful. Uh, we've all been through it as... Uh, Eric, recently. Uh, well, not, well, I know Adam hasn't, hasn't seen a dog die, but um, he, he knows it's like to see a, a, an animal die, so uh, we know... He dropped a guitar once, so he's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A guitar, Adam, you know. Smashed a violin. Yeah. Smashed a violin. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, we 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 uh, we miss Lenwood, and and we're all thinking about we we there's many a video that Lenwood put out with with Sadie and oh uh, I know I know Sadie so yeah but he said in his post ninety three in human years so yeah it's quite good going really yeah, yeah. terrific so uh, welcome everybody to the digital download uh, we've got lots to get through. Um, and um, so I'm Tim Hughes. Uh, if we do some introductions, do you want to go first, Mike? Because you're Mike on Pearson, my... Nice Space Mindset, proud partner of DLA Ignite. Bra Brandon. Hi, everybody. I'm back. I'm Brandon. I am the uh, founder of Funnel Amplified and extremely proud partner of DLA Ignite. And breathing. So, and breathing. That's a good I'm... thing. Good, good, and welcome, welcome back. Because um, I believe there's some bad, bad flu going around. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was. Uh, I, you know, it's one of those things. I wish if you know I got COVID and got sick and got better, but I, uh, I fought at home for two weeks, doctor medicine stuff like that, and then just as I was starting to feel better, and I guess. I share this because this is, I, I guess this is what's happening with this Delta variant is um, I was feeling better. I, I thought I was on an upswing and then I started feeling a little bit in my chest and it was harder to breathe. And by the next day I couldn't breathe and I was in the hospital and on oxygen. So just anyone listening, it's, um, it's a little deceptive there at the end and that, that COVID pneumonia kicked in really quickly after you know fighting what i thought was just the most miserable flu for two weeks so if anyone starts that. getting sick you gotta you gotta keep an eye on it all the way to the end well welcome back thank you we were we were all thinking of you mm -hmm. you guys could were we, awesome could we, appreciate could we push all the these little right could we push these little rectangles like two meters apart <laughs> you, you want me to put my mask on you have a mask on <laughs> yeah we should have our masks on didn't we yeah yeah. Good to see you back. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. I'm just going to close my door. Sure, sure. Well, hello. I'm Thomas Ross. I'm one of the founding partners of uh, Social Selling HQ and a very active and proud member of DLA Ignite in our global network. Adam. I'm Adam Gray. I'm Tim's co founder at DLA Ignite. Uh, so I'm a proud, not partner, but person within DLA Ignite. And Eric, and I believe you got some um, merch. Yes. I, do have, I do have a nice mug. Perfectly timed. <laughs> perfectly timed. Yeah, we've got some. We like a bit of merch around the Crux, Crux Towers. Um, and this is a merch for our, our, our LinkedIn Live, the Big Live Breakfast have, Burrito. What do we have to do to get those in the States? Uh, come on the show. You have to and go get up at three in the morning. <laughs> I, I, was up, I was up in time yesterday, ironically. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Eric from Crux, and uh, yeah, I'm part of this merry band. Great. So, so today we've got. I actually listed the whole things on LinkedIn. Of course, I can't see it now. Um, and the first thing is actually to talk about digital identity. Oh, and and to kick it off, Eric, would you describe what you think? What you would describe digital identity? Yeah, sure, sure. And of course, there's probably many people sitting out there thinking, is he talking about um, passwords and, uh, and, you know, credit cards and stuff like that. What we're talking about in the in the social sense is um, what the breadcrumb trail that your profile and your content is leaving behind about you uh, on social media platforms and what it what it stands for and how it defines you. So when we ask this question, ask this question to, uh, to a management team a few months back, Individually, what do you want your digital identity to be? What do you want your digital legacy to be? When someone goes onto your profile and starts to cycle through your content, what do you want them to be thinking about you? What do you want them to be picking out of the tea leaves of your digital existence? And most people say, well, 
um, you know, what do, what do you want to be known for? Most people will say, well, we want to be known that we are the best legal company in such and such, or we want to be known that we're we're we are the best in class, or a winches company, or a, a winches company, or an ERP a, a, company, or an ERP, or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Well, hold on. Put, let's put that to one side. That's what you do. That's what you do, right? And we'll, we'll come to that. But what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for as an individual? That's what we're trying to get to. And I love this digital dentistry and digital footprint are linked. So important. Yeah, absolutely, Robert. Absolutely. So the point about this is, what do you what do you, what do you really want to be known for as a professional? And when we, uh, there's a beautiful little uh, little uh, moment when you start to fight the way through all the. We used to in incident investigation when I used to inv invest investigate terrible industrial accidents for a living, and we spoke about the five whys why things happened. And we keep going. Into, usually, when you get to the fifth why, you start to get to the the real root of why that occurred. Uh, the first are just bluff and blunder, uh, bluster. So, um, so yeah, we want to be known for being the best at blah blah blah. No, that's what you do. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Well, actually, actually, I'm a CEO, but I actually, I actually want my digital identity to represent that I'm all about the development of my people and the organisation. Ah. Right, so I would be, I, I really want to sort of craft my digital persona, my digital identity around to being a company leader who's into, uh, only really interested in the development of the people that I look after. Okay, that's cool, that's very cool, we can work with that. You might find you're, you're working with someone who's like, uh, I wanna be known as the guy or the girl that's all about innovation. I wanna be known for that. Even though I'm a sales leader, I wanna be the person that's known as being maybe like a technical specialist with a sense of humor. Um, or I want to be uh, I want to be known as a person who's really really into the economy, but also um, you know this might be a person who's a who's a, a marketing leader or a, or a technical specialist or a project manager. I want to be known as the person who's very very good at what I do, but also I want to get across the fun side of my life or the serious side of my life or whatever it might be. And there's something quite beautiful in taking that digital identity and pulling it through a load of content and through a profile to allow people to be really understood about what they want to be known for in the world. And I love that concept of digital identity. And I think, I think once you define it with someone and you define it for yourself, it makes it really easy to produce content because you know, you finally know what you want to be known for. So it's easier to create a content plan that resonates with that identity. Did that make any sense or was it just gibbering? No, I, I think that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I think that, the, the concept is so simple. Um, I think, though, that, that so many of us uh, can't implement that concept. So, and, and I think that that people create that that footprint that they have. So, your LinkedIn profile and all the things that you kind of plug in around that from Twitter and Instagram and, and all of your other networks. And first of all, you know, when when I land on that, you have to stand for something. But before you stand for something, you have to be attractive enough that I can be bothered to read it to work out that you do stand for something. And then I I, I think a, a lot of people then struggle with how they how they speak from that platform. And, you know, we joke about this sometimes. If, if you want to get the maximum engagement and reach and visibility of your posts, you create posts of little videos of cats playing with balls of wool because everybody loves that. And, you know, you get a huge amount of engagement. But actually, if you don't stand for being the best pet, pet shop in the world, then actually that's not really of a, a lot of use, really, to promote what it is that you actually do and what it is you want to be famous for. And there's that sort of juxtaposition. And I think that so often people struggle with how do they marry those two things together? How do yeah. they marry together the kind of the transmission of, of them as a person across the various networks through great content that people engage with and love and, and brings them closer together? But one thing we know is that everybody in the world's busy. So if I have to dig through your content and your profile to work out what you do and, and what value you can bring to me, I'm not going to bother. If it isn't yeah. there front and center of that, I'm just going to move on and find somebody else. I, th I think that's brilliant. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't think what I'm about to say disagrees with anything that Eric and Adam just said, hopefully. But, you know, I, I've been coaching professionals for almost 25 years, one on one and in large groups. And identity is the central problem. Right. And so we, we've got 
an entire couple of generations of people that have been programmed by the industrial revolution that they are what they do, not who they are. And so it's really not about creating a new digital identity. In my opinion, it's about freeing yourself or working with a team of people that can free you to actually be who you are, to believe that you as a human being are worth being introduced to other people, that, that you bring something of value. And the only thing that, that I would add, and it's not really a cautionary tale, but like your digital identity has to be integrated 100% into your actual identity. You cannot mm -hmm. have another persona. You need to be famous for something that actually really is important to you. Otherwise, it's not going to be sustainable because you're not going to be emotionally connected to it. You'll be logically connected to this persona of who you want to be. I'm the number one digital LinkedIn influencer. Oh, brochure, go to hell. You know, I, I could care less, right? I thought I worked with the number one guy. You know, anyways, you know, but it's got to be who you are. And, and that's what I would say is like the biggest thing that I've gotten out of our social selling influence course when I went through it as a participant was this incredible transformation. I felt like a butterfly coming out of a pupa. You know, I was like, oh, wow, who I am, even the, the really hard parts about being a special needs parent, who I am is actually important. It's actually attractive. I don't have to be a Kardashian to be successful within my target transformation. Market. I felt like a butterfly coming out. Where did that echo come from? Hey, when you're that good. <laughs> you go, good. pirate. You know, you know, all of this, this makes me think of, I, I jotted down three things that kept popping to mind. And Eric, thank you for kicking this off because I do think that, um, you know, the foundation of sales right now, as we all know, it's in a shaky, weird place. Sales leaders are scared to make decisions. There's lots of conversations about being authentic, about, um, you know, building real relationships. But I think corporately, and, and I use the word corporate to be big, it could be from Fortune 50, even down to small companies. Um, there's just this fear of what being authentic truly means. And if there's truly value in being authentic, and we forget that when we are in real life with people, when we go to lunch, we have a cocktail, we have breakfast, whatever it may be, we don't talk business, business, business. We share about our humans and who we are, and we ask questions, and we get to know each other, and we know that the, the best relationships lead to the best business opportunities, whether it's close the deal or get more referrals for deals or you refer to them. And, and that's the way the world works, right? It's who you know. And so I keep thinking about number one um, was Simon Sinek. I just kept thinking about why. And it's just such a simple, simple message that I think all of us could re, you know, relook at over and over and over and over again, because we forget who we are. We get so caught up in what we do what our income level is, what our title is. Did I get invited to speak at this event or not? We forget the why and the power in knowing our why and who we are at the core is so strong if we allow it to flourish, if we, if we nurture it. And then that leads me into the mindset that we talk a lot about, which is that imposter syndrome. And I don't, I don't have a perfect answer for this. I, I think that a lot of the skills that we teach and daily habits and daily um, systems that we teach people how to do things, how to think about storytelling helps. But we've got to figure out how to help people just get over that imposter syndrome. And I know that's a really easy brush. Yeah, just get over your imposter syndrome. But we've got to learn how to be an authentic community that people can feel empowered to go, okay, how do I genuinely be me? How do I be okay with, and I'm going to do air quotes of mistakes. You know, you may overshare or you may say something that doesn't resonate. Our tendency is to go, oh, that post sucked. Nobody responded. I didn't get views. Don't, don't, you know, don't show that part of my human. And we've got to get over that and, and just move forward. And, and the last thing I just keep thinking, and this is the core of what we all do, is train the mindset and train the skills. When, when we're empowered 
not just mentally, but we also have daily skills. Like, you know, we have our KPIs that we go through. Here's how we engage with somebody. Here's how we're telling stories and social posts that builds confidence, right? Repetition, experience, it builds muscle, it builds confidence. And then when you're in a community of people like we all build, where everyone's learning together, making mistakes together, pushing each other, then you've got, you know, the, the rising tide raises everybody up. So those are my I think I, Sorry, I, I think I, I think I, no, I think it's I think it's absolutely fabulous. Absolutely I would just fabulous. add to that if I if I could. Um, and, and I really loved your 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 overview, uh, Eric, and everybody's had some great comments. For me, the 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 simplest way to do that, and we do it every time we're going and we're training teams and, and groups, is the header. So the the header on the LinkedIn profile where we're trying to get people away from putting the VP of this or the sales manager or the customer service person and their title. And we try and get them into that personalized header that says who they are. That's the beginning of the process. And as we all know, holy crap, that's hard, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is hard. I remember when Tim and Adam literally in my boardroom beat the crap out of me for two days because I kept coming up with a header that was just a basically a variation of the previous one that was awful, right? <laughs> you know, I, 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 I see a CEO and I also like golf. <laughs> it's this and this is the longest associate we have, right? Yeah, and I had, had a hell of a time with it. I gotta be very honest. How can right, I, vi but, vice but, president of sales and I have a guitar. But, but the thing, but the thing is, Thomas, it, it is all about results. Period. Yeah. How come you don't say you're the number you, one? Yeah. You, you, by the way, that was my header. Uh, Tim's got a great, results, great, great, and 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 I thought, well, that says it all. What the hell else do you want to say? Uh, <laughs> and it, listen, it it took me months, and I mean months, maybe maybe longer. I'm not sure. Before I really got it, got it, right. And then started changing up my head. I mean, you can change your header as many times as you want to uh, within reason, as long as it reflects everything that everybody on the team has been. Has been and don't, don't, you find, don't you find when it's beautiful to watch and also experience in yourself, um, when, when, when that, Brandon, Brandon said the confidence and repetition and building that, so, you know, it, yeah, of course, it's, it's difficult to say to someone, come on, just smarten up, be authentic. <laughs> it's, you know, just turn it on like a tap. But I find if you really home in on that digital identity piece, it gives people it gives people an anchor point, an anchor point to say, right, okay, I understand what I could be in the world, I understand what I want to be in the world, and all it all it almost makes them more muscular, as you said, working those muscles and becoming more. And and I remember when I started out on this myself, I wasn't I was uh, still a bit of a noob on social and a, a, an absolute luddite when I first started. Um, I remember if I if I took any kind of criticism or any sort of like challenging commentary to any content that I put out, I used to lose sleep over it, right? I used to really lose sleep over it. It would, it would eat away at me because I was unsure about myself. I didn't understand what my own digital identity, what I wanted it to be. And I wasn't, I wasn't able to drop these fake balustrades of corporate nonsense that I had up there that were supposed to be under the under the banister of and under the header of I'm supposed to be professional here right so and my version of what I believe professional here is is created by someone else in the marketing department that tells me what I can and can't write and that's fine that's that's what I've built all this on if, so, Eric, this isn't Facebook mate <laughs> <laughs> exactly but I remember I remember what, what, sorry mate Two questions. Is yep. Luddite, is that like a town in Scotland? Luddite, what is that? Just, yeah. just outside Livingston. Lud, Luddite. <laughs> the second, I'm the second I got it. I got to admit, one of my. Hold on. My I got favorite... one more question. Brandon, I got one more question. Go for so, it. So, Eric, like, and, and this is for everyone here. I was talking to a CEO yesterday, and he's like, I believe what you're telling me is the truth. And I said, Is that logical or emotion? What's what are you telling me? He goes, logically, I'm in. Emotionally, I can't do it. And I go, why? He goes, it's too far away. And I said, I said, that's because you're trying to go from A to Z. And that's the beauty that Thomas just shared. And I want your opinion on it, Eric, that we start with a headline. We're going to start with one small thing. 
Yeah, it's taking it's one small step for man, <laughs> one small step <laughs> for social kind, right? So you take that step and you're beginning to like like uh, Forrest Gump when he starts to run when he's a little kid, right? All the bolts start coming out the clamps and it's all... I remember back in the day being so offended when or upset by someone with someone going, I completely disagree with this. And I would be like, oh man, I'm... I, I need to I need to go back to the house and lock the door. This is this is terrifying. Um, and I remember there was a day, Tim might remember it, there was a day when we were asked what we wanted all this to mean. And uh, everything was starting to make sense. I had the thunk, the thunk moment happened and I started to begin to see the world like the matrix, right? And I'm getting a little bit stronger. I stopped some bullets. And I remember there was a day when I actually surprised myself where I got a bit of jip, but I wrote a piece about social selling and I, I wrote, I think it was called, it was a, it was a nicely poised, non-controversial uh, article called Marketing is Dead. <laughs> Pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> and someone piled in with, uh, com- you know, completely destroying my argument, and said, uh, and said, uh, uh, you know, content like this doesn't belong on this platform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I realised that things had changed when I lifted my keyboard and started to type like Neo. If you don't like this, you'd be as well blocking me because you're really not going to like tomorrow's. <laughs> <laughs> and I, re- I realized that I'd kind of changed. I'd become a little bit more, a little bit more self-assured about what I wanted to be in the world and wanted to be known for. Did, but, did yeah. you see yesterday there was a, a, a little video clip of a woman that had taken her son to see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Did you see that? No. Okay, so so the son is four, and he was dressed up as a beef eater, you know, red coat, black trousers, and the big bearskin hat. Mm-hmm. And he's standing outside the gates of Buckingham Palace, and one of the, the, the beef eaters walks up to a security guard who's got a gun and he's wearing all of his flak jacket and everything. And the, the security guard kind of points at the little boy who's standing outside the gates. And the beef eaters are not allowed to smile. They're not allowed to engage with the public at all. So this guy then turns and he walks through the gates and he fist bumps this little lad. And then the little lad turns around and they have a photograph taken together. And uh, the mum, whose son it is, has has shared this video. And it's it's gorgeous. I showed it to my wife and she just went, oh, isn't that beautiful? Um, And somebody had said, doesn't this belong on Instagram? And what was really refreshing was that it wasn't me that I wasn't the first one to pile in to just say shut up uh, there were loads of people piling in saying why would you say that you know this, this had been been uh, posted for an hour and it had 200 likes on it and loads and loads of comments and people were just loving it and everybody was saying that's exactly what this is about it's about being human about being friendly it's not just videos of of little boys meeting their 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 heroes um, but actually, there's a place for that in the same way there's a place for having a beer with a client or talking about where you've been on holiday with a prospect. There's a place for all of those things in the world of business, isn't there? There better be, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> business is relational. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't have a, a, a solid customer in my past 25 years experience and memory that was a great customer and not became to some extent a friend, a a good relationship, because the more time you spend with people, the more you get to know them. And if not, you're going to, you know, lose the business. It's this whole, this whole crap of, Oh, this doesn't belong on LinkedIn. My opinion, it's just filled with a lot of people that hide behind their title. They hide behind their job. They hide behind their success and they're too scared to be authentic with who they are as a human. And so they just shoot down other people that have that freedom to be authentic and just be who they are. It doesn't matter if you're on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram and anything else, just go be a freaking human and stop overthinking life. Once uh, I, I, I remember, I remember um, having a, 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 a healthy debate with a, with, a, with a person that was on a call. We'd, we'd just gone through a whole chat about strategic social media and social selling. And they said, uh, I absolutely disagree with humanized content on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional platform where professionals uh, do business together. 
This is where we post about jobs and we post about equipment, machinery, and services and prospects. And those of you, mm. those of you out there who are who are uh, destroying this site and carving it uh, are are doing a disservice, and we don't want you doing this. And uh, I, I said, do you do you do you know Reid Hoffman? Have you met Have you met the, the 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 current owners of the people that sit around the board at LinkedIn that actually does? Because they don't agree with you, and they own the platform. So you're defend you're in in the face of improving your situation financially and being a better sales leader. You've decided to adopt a set of morals and values and be a defender of a code that even the owners of the platform don't agree with. What are you on about? What are you? What are you Where on did about? that conversation go? <laughs> it, 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 didn't, it didn't go very well. That that person wrote a piece of content out about uh, about the fact that he had some management consultant speaking to his board today about using our social media platforms to make uh, to make uh, uh, make uh, make an impact on their business growth, and then they wrote a big spiel about the fact that. Um, under no circumstances will my social media accounts be used for business purposes because they're mine. They're not the company's. So I, I have a, uh, uh, to, quote, to quote Neil Bortz, I have a, I have a brief piece of absolute truth. You ready? Yeah. Go. Some, people, some people just suck. <laughs> right? That could be a new header. What's great about social is now we can see <laughs> All the a-holes that suck. I, I love it. Well, Mike, last, 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 last week you told people to go forth and multiply, and now... <laughs> hey, man, it's and, in the and, and, and the week before we had... Uh, burn, burn, was it burn or something? You said well, yeah. Go so die in the fire. Go, go die in the fire, and, yeah. Go for it. Michael, Michael is single-handedly sing, single trying to get Tim's license revoked for <laughs> LinkedIn Live. But you don't think about it, right? So, like, uh, one, of things, just suck. one of the things that's terrible about social, whether it's <laughs> on or offline, is some people suck, right? And, and, and I used to deal with this all the time in another world where we're running referral groups, and people would be like, well, why is that guy so mean? I'm like, well, that guy sucks. And they're looking at me, I'm like, there's ah, no – right, yeah. I'm okay. like, there's no other explanation. Like, have you been able to find a place where – Everyone is nice all the time because I sure have it. <laughs> you know, like we have done Scotland, it. Scotland, Scotland, um, <laughs> the nicest place in the world. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying I don't believe you. I just know other people from near Scotland. <gasps> I dare you Ooh, near, near Scotland. Scotland. Near, near oh. Scotland, yeah. Like the entire country, of Ireland doesn't agree. But anyways, um, the the point being is. Like what Eric said, it's really hard. And I went through that too, where you're like, hey, nobody, nobody's really liking what I'm doing or disagreeing. But, but this, this isn't just about running outside and firing a shotgun in the air and hoping a duck will fall on your lap. You know, that's broadcasting. We're, we're talking about social selling and selling's about research. It's about, did you like that one, Eric? Yes, I, did. <laughs> I, was, I was talking I really did. I was talking to the CEO yesterday, a guy. Right. I said, I said, like your email marketing is the only difference between me running outside shooting and having a bird fall and call myself a duck hunter is you've got a million people blasting in the air, but you're still not aiming at anything. You know, like let's let's be serious. And so all I would encourage people when you look at this, your, your digital identity gets formed, but then you have to do something with it you have to share it and then you have to take action and that's the biggest difference mm -hmm. it's so hard in sales to take action on something you don't believe in and i would argue that that's why it's so important to integrate your digital identity as an individual and as a business into who you actually are what you really do that way when you venture forth and take action at least you believe in what you're doing did you just invent the term digital identity well you know hey a lot of tea. It's the Irish tea. Like, I love you, it. Have you ever been it. to Cork? You ever been to Cork, Ireland? I've, I've been to Cork. Yeah. Yeah. They talk different. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do. That's where the expression "put a cork in it" comes from. It's, I'll never forget. And, and, and Mike, and, and Mike, is that is that an attempt at an Irish accent or? No, no, no. <laughs> That's a good way to get your tail <laughs> in Dublin. <laughs> yeah. 
are you are you mocking me? No, I actually was just being an arrogant American. I'm sorry. <laughs> because you sound a bit like Brad Pitt in the in the was oh, it that's, that's, ooh, Snatch. Oh man. dear. That's bad. <laughs> like it's my favorite favorite movie. Because... Nothing I have ever said on this is more hurtful than that. <laughs> So have we done digital identity then? I think we have. Yeah, it's a good uh, half hour on that. I think that was. Uh, I think that was. That was lovely. So, so does anyone want to pick up um, sales and marketing, talent acquisition and retention? Sorry, you're breaking up, Tim. I have to go. What? what? <laughs> Sorry, I left a fork in the knife drawer. <laughs> I think. Tom, I what, what was it? What was the topic, Tim? The t a topic was sales and marketing, talent acquisition and retention. Go, Adam. Oh, we got a question now. Huh? We've got a question. Go for it, Leah. Is oh, Eric yeah. from Ireland? Oh. <laughs> this will just show. I'm going to have a little look at the delay right now. I would, it is, we're waiting for that. If you want, I'd love to. Uh, Today's what Friday, so Wednesday was the uh, Sales Loft Summit, and I'd love to get a little update on what I learned there. But what do you think will happen to digital identities as the um, metaverse avatars become bigger? Well, good question. Very good question. Um, it will become more important for you to yes. be authentic and human. Yeah, you more know, even more important as we move into a world of. Uh, AI virtual reality bots that are trying to have conversations uh, and, and that's a really big issue for me so uh, bots so for, for every organization we talk to they're looking for a shortcut often to generate revenue from the potential global reach that these social platforms have and what they want to do often is they want to find a way to not waste time engaging with people that aren't going to spend money in order to flush out the people that are going to want to spend money in order that they can have a conversation with those people. Whether or not that's through having a, a, a telemarketing agency phone people up or a, a, an uh, a, a marketing automation tool sending emails to people or advertising advert or bots going out pretending to be humans to try to strike up a conversation. Fundamentally, at the very top level, LinkedIn and every other social network works from a point of reciprocity. I'm going to go onto the platform. I'm going to share content and my thinking with people, and I'm going to consume their content and their thinking. And if one of those two things isn't there, the other one cannot exist without it. I'm not going to go onto a platform and strike up a conversation with a bot. And if a bot tries to have a conversation with me, I will not, if, if that's my only experience of being on a social network, I will not continue to visit the social network because there is no humanity there. It's like when people say, uh, I'm not going to go onto LinkedIn and have people sell to me. I'm going to go onto LinkedIn in order that I can sell. Well, it doesn't work that way. And it doesn't work that way because if you're not going to give me the opportunity of giving you my sales pitch, I'm certainly not going to let you give me yours. And I think that the challenge that we have is that when we look for shortcuts, Seth Godin famously said, um, the problem with marketers is that they break everything. And as soon as we find a way to shortcut the investment of our time and ourselves that we have to make in these platforms, we run the risk of destabilizing the platform and breaking the platform. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are there meeting people, being human, striking up relationships and friendships. Oh, you know, I really like Eric because I saw him on the beach with his son at his son's birthday party. He's being a good dad. I like people that are good dads. I try to be a good dad. That's how that line of thinking works. And it's because of that, that we have trust, we have respect and we have a friendship. If all I see is Eric spouting stuff about his work, no humanity, no uh, value. If, if all Brochures, see, buy yeah, my product because we're great. You know, it's like every company in the world says their product is great. 
So why would I believe you? The only reason I would believe you is Gary V famously said content is king, but context is God. So actually, if I haven't got a reason to believe what it is that you say, you're just spouting words. Everybody's spouting words. And bots are the very worst example of that. And, and it's a very dangerous road to go down. So to answer your question, Leah, for me, the problem is that the, the uh, thank you. Uh, the problem is that as more and more of these pseudo personalities come up, whether or not those personalities are coming up on LinkedIn or Twitter or even on your website, you know, we've got a chat bot on the website. No, you haven't. I shall pick up the phone and I will find somewhere the phone number to speak to the company because I don't want to be put in a digital queue, which I have to keep feeding my information. And I wrote a post about this the other day. Keep feeding information into this body. They have all of my information at their fingers, but they don't. Because the exactly. purpose of this is to maximize breakage. You know, actually, what they want is the minimum interaction with people unless those people are spending money. This is, <clears throat> this is a fundamentally flawed strategy that organizations are employing. And bots and ways to shortcut that uh, are flooding this environment with interactions that are, are, are so one-sided. You know, if there's no value in humanity in it for me, if it's just a, a, a value uh, uh, hoover for you, then... I'm not interested. Would you would you would you send a robot to a networking event? Oh, people have tried. Yeah, absolutely. Only only if that networking mm. event had other robots. Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever get. To, I wonder True if we'll get story. to a point in the future where where uh, where twenty years from now, where people say, "Have you got any connections at BP?" No, but my avatar is connected to a oh, lot of robot. avatars at BP. So, you know, so, you any, anybody else want to answer this question about? Um, I you do. Know, the more the bit, the more that we do this, what, what, how do you feel that it's going to go? So, so here's the thing: How have human beings marketed for thousands of years? Word, of, word mouth. of mouth. Word of mouth. Like you know, it's how do we do word of mouth at scale, digital, right? And so. If you understand that humans prefer to buy from other humans, especially where there's any perception of risk, like I'll buy my Coca-Cola. I'm agnostic about where I buy Coca-Cola, right? It's Coca-Cola. It's just, it's a commodity. But when there's any kind of complexity or perception of risk, I, like Adam, do not want to talk to a freaking robot. I want to talk to a human being and feel like at least there's an illusion of care. Like just, just give me the artifice of caring about me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what that's what I would say is like, I think, Leah, that people that understand how human beings evolve to communicate are going to be even more effective as technology rises, period. Right. I am with you, Adam, with a lot of profanity. The, the, well, the, guys, the, the, guys, can I can I be the can I be the contrarian? The, the, there's a great book. Uh, by Douglas Adams, the writer of the Hitchhiker's Guide. I guess to not. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. The, just, just, just while we're on the subject, the, uh, a great book, and he he wrote a book called Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. And in that book, he said the reason that people invented answer phones was to listen to messages and talk to people they didn't want to talk to, and the reason that mankind invented video recorders to, was to watch programs they didn't want to watch. And that's exactly what bots do. Sorry, Thomas. Oh, it's, 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 it's okay. Um, but I, I will be the contrarian to this, to this discussion. Um, I agree with some of what's been said here, but I disagree with a lot of it. At the end of the day, guys, technology is, is going to move forward. And whether you want to drag your heels and, and kick and scream and not like it, you can do that. Um, but it's still going to drag. It's still going to go forward. Now, that doesn't mean we have to lose the human side. There is a way to use AI. There is a way to use bots. There is a way to use technology that helps the, the human process that helps us, as Mike said very clearly, even though I don't know that he did it on purpose, so that we can communicate at scale yes. uh, and get our personas at scale and get our digital identity at scale. There's a reason for that. Uh, and for those organizations that figure out how to use that technology, but maintain, you know, the personalities and the human aspect and the digital identity 
of themselves and their company and their culture, they will win. For those who just try to use the bots, as you so effectively described, in only to make their life easier and to save them all that process of retraining their team to be digital and, and, to, be, and, and to have their own identities. We don't want to do that. We just want to get a bot and that'll connect it. They're going to fail. Absolutely. But that is not to say that there isn't a place for it because there absolutely is. And, and I think the more we put them together and marry those things, uh, the, the more impact we can have at scale. I would just get yeah, uh, I'll agree with that, Thomas. Yeah, I agree. Mike, can I jump in? I, I, I think that, um, you know, there's a, there's a knee jerk reaction easy to, you know, respond to technology being all bad and automation being all bad. I think it just takes, you know, intelligence, right? It takes thoughtfulness. And I try to break it down this way and go, you know, let what technology can do that the human shouldn't have to do, let technology do. But let's not replace the humanity with technology so that you lose that human touch. And I know that's really kind of a generic answer, but that's the way I try to look at technology. How do we use technology to support the human to do the human work not replace the work that they should be doing agreed yeah i'm not against technology by the way i'm just against technology that sucks <laughs> like, like, i'm just saying like you know i'm i'm waiting thomas for some of the stuff that you're writing about which is really inspiring for me how you write about cx customer experience i am waiting for companies to actually listen to you and start doing it but they're not yet i'm just saying like there so, are some well mm. like seriously privately send me some links my god i would like please like I, if i hey, Bra brandon do you want to talk about the sales loft conference <laughs> yeah. 15, 15 or so minutes left that's yeah. a nice bridge by the way yeah don't yeah. give them 15 minutes seamless seamless yeah. well and it i mean it kind of translates into into that technology side too and um, you know, I, let me do this. I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can, because there's a lot to, to say there, but, you know, sales loft, their history was, um, I think it's very interesting and it's, uh, you know, they, they were, they started out as LinkedIn connections, right? Finding LinkedIn connections, sending out yeah. connection requests, asking people for demos, all this stuff that we, we kind of, you know, rally against. And then sales loft, I think they got their hand slapped. And this is my summary and, and my details may not be perfect. And they've been around for what, seven, eight, nine years. Um, I think they got, you know, had challenges with LinkedIn APIs. They had to regroup who they were and they became more of an email automation cadencing system and, you know, helping teams at scale get emails out. Again, things that we don't agree with. We, don't, we think that, I mean, I think in technology, there's, there's room for some of that. Um, but if that's all you're doing and it's just, you know, hey, this is who I am. I'm awesome. Here's my brochure. Click the calendar link and schedule time with me. Obviously, strategically, that's crap and it doesn't really work. But um, we're... What I like to see what SalesLoft is doing, and obviously I'm not inside, I don't know exactly where they're going, but number one is they're talking about, it's time to tell a different story about sales. That was the big brand. And what I appreciated about that is they were getting back to the human side of sales. And I think that um, you know, their goal, if I, if I could summarize what I heard, was they want to build a platform for revenue teams that help them execute their daily tasks. It could be email, it could be phone calls, it could be doing you know, research from third-party intent. It, you know, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of technology and a lot of activities that salespeople um, can do and should do on a daily basis. And they wanna be a central platform that empowers salespeople to do that in one place. And they are calling themselves now a modern revenue workplace. They trademarked it. I, you know, I get it. It's all part of branding and everything, but I do really appreciate the heart behind it because I think it is getting um, salespeople 
equipped. I think there's a training element that obviously still is going to need to be done uh, because there's mindset and all the other stuff that we talk about. But there's there's a the strategy, I guess, the heart behind it of being, hey, how do we have a platform that's going to empower it's going to measure, it's going to keep people with their KPIs, even social KPIs, not just uh, how many emails did you send out? How many phone calls did you send out? And the last thing I'll say that, um, uh, and Tim, when I was on your uh, podcast a month or so ago, we talked about my story mm-hmm. where I got laughed at uh, speaking at a sales event in 2017. And I was talking about you know, we got to blow up the silos of sales and marketing that the whole concept of the buyer journey, expecting that people are going to do a Google search, they're going to click a banner ad, they're going to go to the website, they're going to read, they're going to fill out a form, they're going to become a lead. And then based on their experience of what emails do they open, what articles do they read, what PDFs do they consume, a lead score magically appears marketing throws it over the fence to sales and sales then goes and close the deal. I had not yet heard a company of that size. And I know, you know, we've got gardeners and foresters and analysts out there that have been saying this, but they repeated it and their CMO, um, Sydney, I forget her last name. She was on there even as a CMO. And I think Thomas, you had said earlier, or whoever said, Adam, maybe it was you, Seth Godin says marketers break everything. But listening to a CMO of that size and type of company say, this buyer journey is a fallacy now. Like we can't trust it at all. Um, Lead scoring is, is, you know, maybe I'm a little harsh with the word saying it's a joke, but we just can't trust it because buyers do whatever the hell they want to do now. I, I proved it didn't work six, ten years ago. I mean, it's like uh, it, it's it's great, you know. So it's never really worked. It's right? never but, worked. Right, but it's it just, gave it's it just KPIs. It just it, none of us do that. But I had a guy from KPIs HubSpot ring me up and say, I "Had a guy from HubSpot ring me up," and um, he. Um, um, then sent me an email and I said, why are you cold calling me? He said, oh, oh, it's not a cold call. You've been all over the website. I said, yes, because I'm looking for information to write blogs. I'm not buying right. shit off you. Oh. <laughs> Where to qualify that call. Hey, yeah, yeah, that that is, I, I, I may have had the biggest lead score in the, in the world, but I ain't buying anything, mate. I'm just right. saying what you guys really feel. That's all I'm saying. That's my job. So let me sorry, let me sorry, let me let me let me bring this back full circle because I want to bridge off of, off of what everybody said, uh, and this comes to a question that we didn't we didn't address yet, and that is what's the future of hiring and recruiting for sales and and even and even marketing because this ties all that together, right? Um, you know, and I wrote a little thing on it uh, yesterday, and I've done so in the past, and I'll probably continue to do so. But the the fact is that the people we're looking for today do not look anything like the people we looked for 10 years ago, right? right. Um, the skills, the behaviors, the intelligence. And I don't mean by way of being more intelligent, but by way of being emotionally intelligent and by way of being able to read into what's happening with, with their customers as opposed to whatever marketing bullshit came down the pipe yesterday. So it, 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 it really does change um, what we do going forward and, and how we hire, you know, there's, there's, a, there's decades of all of these tools to do questionnaires. You know, I remember I was a hockey stick when somebody did this questionnaire for me on, 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 the, on, on analyzing what kind of a person I was going to be as a salesperson. I didn't really know what that meant then. I don't know what it means today. And I don't care if I ever learn because it doesn't matter. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, it's about how I can or can't communicate with the people that I want to work with in, in terms of customers. And if I do a shitty job, then I'm not going to last. And if I do a great job, I am. And the manner by which that was done yesterday is completely different today, period, full stop. So if I'm going to do that and I'm going to train people how to do that, I better know what that means. And most sales managers, most CMOs, most CS- CEOs do not know that so That's they're just they, pulling they, out the same got, damn manual two feet in the past haven't they and most human yeah. resource it, teams don't know it either 
By the way, I wasn't done my rant, just so you know. Oh, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just I got one thing to add to that, right? We're getting ready. Uh, myself and a scientist are getting ready to write a little blog about why you're assessing employees incorrectly in the, in the pre-hire process. And it goes back to what you said, Thomas. Like, we have been hiring for people that can go out and stab and kill things. Like, linear hunters, right? Go out there and go get it. That is not curious right and this is the biggest problem when you look at master salespeople that are able to have a long career it's usually because they're curious right this curiosity intellectual curiosity and the fastest involved in that that you can scientifically validate that is the killer assessment criteria for people in a digital world because otherwise you're just a bot right the curiosity, the ability to do what Thomas said, which was read into these asynchronous communications, the ability to, to be interested. I'm telling you right now, five years from now, it is going to be the number one hiring criteria. So I was talking to James Barry this week. I'm, I'm going to do a podcast with him. So he's but they've, they've said they're a startup. They've got 25 people. Everybody is going to have a personal brand. It's, you have to have a personal brand to, if you're going to work for the company. Um, and he's recruiting uh, using the three things that he's looking for in salespeople. What what company is this? What James Berry? Um, they uh, they're they're uh, um, they're uh, I don't know. Sorry, is they're a talent consultancy and recruitment company. So yeah, help so you James Body. James, it was on my podcast a few weeks ago. May, maybe, maybe yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he's he's quite he's quite um, he's using social a lot. They're getting a lot of their business through social. And he says he's looking for three things in terms of salespeople. He's looking for them to be creative. He's looking for them to be sharing and understanding what that means. And he's looking for storytelling. Now, he doesn't want the finished article because he knows that he can train the people into that. And he doesn't need to have someone with a personal brand or, or those things, because then again, that can be trained. But he's looking for those uh, those attributes in a person in sales. So it's not... 20 years sales experience. It's not a black book of contacts. It's not um, someone that's got, I, I, I'm, you know, as soon as I get my teeth into a, a customer, um, I, either I'll die or they'll die before I sign the deal, you know, on their LinkedIn profile, or whatever it is. They're well, looking, they're looking for people that can be active on social. Why? Because the client's there. So that he's not looking for uh, hammers to hammer to go looking for nails. He's looking for people that can plant trees. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Boom. And and I think as that becomes more understood, common, and put in place by uh, CSOs and by chief revenue officers, I think that's the new title today, um, we're going to see more and more success come across those companies. Um, the, the, the merger and the integration of sales and marketing is almost complete, right? Except for we, we, we uh, and, and I won't spend too much time on this, but we, we still have CMOs um, who don't yet really get that all the digital technology they bring to the game needs to be humanized, right? Uh, and, and the teams need to be able to use that in a, in, a, in a human way. And when that happens, you will have full integration. I mean, today's salespeople, are quasi marketing people when you're writing that creative article, right? And when you're telling, when you're doing the storytelling, you have become a marketer. Yes, in fact, you're doing it in a in a, in a very different format that people can relate to, but you have become a marketer, right? So he, he works for um, Beacon Talent. Their website is beacontalent.io. Oh yeah. I mean, if you can't market, you are a slave to lead gen. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, if you can't market, you suck. <laughs> no, I was leaving. One eight hundred. One eight hundred. You suck. Here again. This is the time for Hitler, Mike. This is the like warm and fuzzy, basking in the last vestiges of caffeine leaving my system. But the, the reality is, is if you individually are in a sales role or a leadership role, and you don't have part of your identity as a marketer in a humanized way, like Thomas said, you are really inhibiting your freedom right you really are like because you need to be ideally 
confident in control about your ability to move alpha on your own. Mike, can we answer the question? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think we need to be careful on that question because if we start saying that Gen Z can't with Gen X, we've got a problem. Yeah. So this, this, this is absolutely false. We have a problem because it's about it's about it's about uh, skills, experience, willingness to learn, willingness to adapt, and yeah, I don't think it's as clear cut as they can't because X, Y, and Z. No. Personally, yeah, I, I mean, I've been told I've been told I'm way too old to understand anything about social media. Yeah. How wow. did, did you write that? Book there? No, there, I've I mean, written two best-selling books on it. Yeah, so the reality is, is it has more to do with your ability to be coachable and curious than it is with your age. But also your ability to be credible. You know, when you go to see... Mike, like, Mike do you like content. the uh, comment? Yes. <laughs> yeah. As long as that tribe doesn't suck. <laughs> well, unless they really like bullshit. You know, I think it's it's trusting the process, right? I mean, we keep going back to that mindset. And I think for me, it goes back to that imposter syndrome and knowing your why and, and just being secure and strong in that going, this is who I am and my community will find me and I will find my community and it's all going to be okay. I think when people are trying to force themselves into a community or a persona that doesn't resonate with them, we all just know it. Like it's, there's an inauthenticity there that even if we can't pinpoint it and say it, there's a feeling, there's an energy around it that is just unattractive. You know, this is from an assessment professional's perspective. Do you know what separates someone who understands demographics and generations? Stereotyping. When you stereotype, you dehumanize people. Like, so I despise the whole generational Gen X millennial kind of thing because it's just an excuse to not value a person as a unique human. Like, I am going to interact with you based upon how you interact with me, not based upon how old you are or, for God's sake, what northern section of the United Kingdom you're from. Oh, a boom. <laughs> Always just the little pop shot there. Yeah, just, yeah, I love just, it though. I love it. What you're trying to do, Mike, is like drop a little bomb and then run off, aren't you? Because we're coming to the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I, I, hey, I got I, it too early. <laughs> can, can I can I circle back around to one thing that's not yeah, very important? <clears throat> um, I can say one of the cool things that I've taken away from DLA over the last several months is the word ludite. When I saw that the first <laughs> time, with Adrian. It, it was a northern lute. I, I looked at it and I went, I don't know what that word is. And I looked it up and now it's a word that I hear a lot and I use a lot and I love it. And so uh, that's one of my big uh, gold nuggets from DLA. Well, ludite. It's a great yeah. thing about hanging around people that actually like develop the language we speak as you learn new words. Yeah, very true. But, but and, and new spellings, it would seem. You know, you need to t remove some of the Zs and replace them with Ss. Oh, what's a, what's a that's, that's, that's not a lot of extra E. What's it's, a Z? It's a Z. Adam. Programming. Huh? It's a Z. Z. Yeah, I don't know course. what that word means. <laughs> No. It was a, I just, it was I just want to say one. I just want to say one last thing though. Um, well, you were talking about the different generations. I can remember when the millennials were coming up, right? And and the push and the, and and all of this, you know, the yuppies versus the millennials and 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 all of that. And and millennials today are our best friends, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and they make up the largest proportion of the people that we deal with day in day out. And that whole. Um, that whole identity between the two of them is broken down to the point now where we communicate extremely well because we've learned how to. And that's going to happen, just as you said, Mike, that's going to happen with all the others as well. So to create, you know, only people in their 20s can talk to people in their 20s and only people in their 30s can talk, that's ridiculous. Um, as if we don't have enough complexities and problems just getting people to write the proper header uh, on their LinkedIn profile, right? So... That's my fine finishing touch. Easy. So, so Lee has come up with the term the uh, the neo ludite. Oh. oh gosh, that ain't gonna blow my mind away. I gotta learn something new. I gotta look that up. Is that like the main the, luddite? The neo classic, the neo classical luddite. <laughs> so like pre, -ra pre raphaelite. 
you free, didn't free Raphaelites who died. died. <laughs> Philosophy, philosoph philosophical stuff just is wasted on my tactical, practical brain. <laughs> Well, we're at the at, at the hour. I think we're done. Yeah, today was excellent. I thought. <laughs> I thought today was 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 cool. It was a blast, wasn't it? <laughs> what what is the audience? How many audience is still here? Apart from apart from uh, Nick, who's gone to pick the kids up. I'm with Alice, Leah. Um, just wanted you what you thought about it. There is, a bit of a, there is a bit of a delay. It's, it's several minutes Robert. Until, until that gets out. Because you, like you, is it? Yeah, but you, yeah, but this is this is this is um, streaming art. It's probably days. I mean, I know what they're going to say. No, no, I, che I checked your I checked your profile, and when we when we checked last time, it, it's okay. it's about two minutes of a delay. The, the, uh, the, the delay, yeah. They're mm. going to say Mike was great. That's what they're going to say. <laughs> Mike was Mike was overtly aggressive. Mike cuss, Mike Mike cuss, cuss more, more than, than anyone. Thank you. See, I love this means Mike was great. Oh, and, and the next comment as well. I want more Mike. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost what she said. Uh, Where's that comment about Mike's been on the coffee? <laughs> that, was, that was Eric. How dare you? Mike's coffee is kicking in. <laughs> uh. I, would, I would just like to see the... Uh, the digital download preparation by Mr. Garrison down in his down in his man cave with the weights going, come on, you're right. a tiger. And so he, he's got his weights and he's lifting the weights and then sipping yeah. a coffee and lifting Sip the, the weights. Coffee. And sipping <laughs> the coffee. <laughs> I'm ready. You tell me what Thursday I'm ready. Oh gosh. We get into the magic <laughs> mic. Oh, oh no, please Leah, do not, do not feed oh, the bears. What, what that's a mental be? image. I don't need. No, <laughs> not at you? all. Oh no. Crap no. kills, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I am from Washington, DC. Uh, Very dirty. <laughs> Crack sucks, kids. <laughs> oh, I, don't know how we, I don't know how we got here. <laughs> no. Let's wrap this thing up. We're killing it slowly. <laughs> no, exactly. so, so thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you. And we'll see you next, next week, hopefully. And yeah, and and if if the audience has got any particular questions or things you want us to talk about, then then send us or DM us or, or let us know because we're happy to talk about. Um, and Mike's happy to talk about anything. <laughs> as long as it doesn't suck. As long as it doesn't suck. <laughs> Some people oh, just bye everybody. Bye. Bye. See you bye. Bye. Chris.